you know, I don't, I don't consider myself super expert on this stuff, but I mean, I'm, I, I'm think of myself as kind of, you know, reasonably attentive and concerned. And my sense is that the, the, the crunch is probably going to come sometime between now and then. Um, and so that's for, and, and given given the role that architecture plays in um, uh, in the environment, um, you know, there's not there's not going to be anybody closer to the middle of it than architects. And that's it. And in fact, in the in, you know, in the we had this session. Keelan and I attended this session on the environment yesterday morning that hardly anybody came to. And we were talking there about the fact that, you know, when it comes to the individual building, people are already, um, well, the, the kind of, you know, many of the more um, ambitious um, architects around are, and educators have already learned quite a lot about how to make an environmentally responsible individual building. I, I don't actually think that I think that challenge is already in the process of being met. Maybe it's not a done deal, but we're making significant progress. But um, the much more difficult issue than that is the question of urban form, and the urban form ha has a, plays a uh, a much you know because the ur urban form brings in to play infrastructure, transportation systems, you know d you know the d density profiles of cities, all these kinds of issues. And these are a lot harder to deal with than making any one building, you know, work, you know, perform to a relatively high level of uh, environmental performance. So, so for sure, I think that finding fi finding a way collectively for society to live in the world in an environmentally defensible way, that's I'm sure that's going to be the big challenge. Well, there I probably wouldn't disagree too much with your own, um, you know, the kinds of implications of your own um, nine points, because architects, for sure, they will need a kind of um, uh, heightened uh, environmental literacy, and that environmental literacy will require a, um, uh, a technical or scientific component of some significance to it. I don't think, I, I don't actually think it makes sense to try to turn architects into scientists. Um, and I, but it does seem to me that architects will need to will need to know how to work with the kind of implications of the science which are coming forward. Um, and I'm sure those, you know, you know, new materials, adaptive materials, all these kind of, um, you know. The invention of these materials, smart materials, there's all, you know, the list of things that are coming into play is itself huge. And f knowing how to be, how to be um, um, you know, responsible, creative, and nimble about um, the, the deployment of those um, new phenomena um, is, I think, the central thing. Well, one central thing. And then the other thing is communication, because a lot a lot of the issues to do with sustainability at the scale of the city can only be dealt with through social and political action. It's not only a design issue because people who are, you know, the, the rest of society that's not architects has to be kind of sort of brought into that discussion and they can only be brought into that discussion effectively by people who know how to talk effectively. Think it's depending on what kind of program they're in. If they're, you know, if they're as young as 18 or 19, or as old as 24 or 25, which I guess is what they would be if they're an architecture student nowadays. At least most typically they would be in that kind of time frame. That means they're going to be 30 to 35 in 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 the year you're talking about, which means they're going to be. They may not be at the peak of their careers, but they're going to be well into their professional careers as architects at that point. And, um, you know, the responsibility for making all this work is going to rest in their hands as a pivotal generation. So I'd say that's what's going to make them important.